Hey, my name is Ben. Thanks for stopping by. Today we're going to be installing a brand new reverse osmosis system. This is one of the most common types of systems that you're going to see installed in most houses. It does not have a booster pump and that's because the supply pressure coming into the house is enough that you don't need one. If you're on well water and you have a pressure switch that's like a 30-50, the pressure is going to be too low for a regular uh, traditional system like this to work very well. In order for our RO system to work properly, you're going to want at least 40 to 60 PSI coming into the system. Just make sure that you don't hook yours up if it's over 60 PSI or whatever your installation instructions require. This system is a five stage system and I'll just talk through them really quick here. It starts out with the sediment stage, which is the fresh water coming in. That's just going to filter out any particulates or little bits of things that are in the water. Carbon, carbon again, and those are just going to filter out some impurities that cannot be handled by the reverse osmosis membrane. Then here we will have the reverse osmosis membrane itself, which looks like this. And then after it goes through that, it goes through a final stage just to reduce any little bit of odor that may be remaining. So you can install this underneath the sink like you see here, but in my opinion, it's nice if you can put the system somewhere else. There's a couple of reasons why I like this. The first reason is that you're using up quite a bit of space in your cabinet, especially once you set your tank underneath the sink. The other reason that I don't like them under the sink is that when you take these filters off, you generally have a little bit of water spillage and the process is just a little bit more of a headache. For those reasons, we've decided to place this particular system in the basement directly underneath where the sink is located. You could also put the system on the opposite side of the wall if you had a utility closet or a garage or something similar where it would be out of the way. All you need to do is run the few lines that need to be connected under the sink through the floor or the wall in order to accommodate this. So the next the next part of the process has been going on for several minutes already and it is deciding on where to place the faucet. So preferably place right here. <laughs> what do you think, Ben? Uh, I think that would work fine. Yeah, but what would you say? Is I nice? would probably, even though it doesn't make logical sense, I'd probably put it exactly mirrored to how the soap dispenser is right there. I'd put it on the other corner just because that's that's the norm. Symmetrical. <laughs> Symmetrical. So real quick, we'll go over these push to connect fittings. You basically take your tubing and make sure you get it cut off nice and clean and make sure that there is no excessive burrs around the outside edge of it. If there's any sort of sharp portion, it could damage the O-ring that is inside of this fitting. And when we push these in here, they'll kind of stop initially and you, you might think that it's sort of connected, but it's not. You need to make sure you go ahead and push it nice and firmly until it kind of snaps in and you can't push it any further in. Now when I pull out, it will not come out. That's all that it takes. These things are super easy to use. If you want to remove a fitting, you simply take this uh, little outer lip here and push that in and you can pull the pipe out of the fitting. So we're going to attach the valve to the top of the tank here now and we're going to use a little bit of Teflon tape to seal the threads. You usually like to go around about four or five times. So around five times. You only need to hand tighten this. Don't get out your tools to wrench on this because if you do, you can end up splitting this plastic fitting here. There are three lines that you're going to need to go down to the system underneath the floor here. The first one is our supply water line that's going to be coming from under the sink here. We're going to attach this in just a second. And then secondly, we have our waste water line that's coming back up and that's going to be dumping into these drainage pipes here. And the last one is our water line that will actually be feeding our faucet. These two are quarter inch lines and this is a three eighths inch line. I also made a video about how to install one with a booster pump, which is what I have at my house because I am on well water and I don't have enough pressure to make one of these systems work. So I will link right up here in a card or in the description below to how to install a reverse osmosis system that uses a booster pump. So we're going to be supplying our system from the cold water line here. And in order to connect our adapter, we just need to shut off our faucet uh, tube here at our shutoff. And then we will disconnect the cold water faucet tube from right up here where it attaches onto the faucet. And that's where we'll put in our adapter for feeding our RO system. This is the fitting we're going to be using to tap into our water line. So our eighth inch red line will come off of this here and then our faucet tube will connect to the bottom and this top part here will connect to where the faucet tube used to connect. This here has a gasket in it so you can just tighten this up hand tight and then just a little bit extra and you should be good. 
So this actually had a fitting that I can I could undo to take this down. So I get this brass connector here nice and snugged in here, letting the gasket do the work of the ceiling. And then we will connect our whole adapter here. Hand tight is almost enough, but a little bit extra is good. It's about like that is good. And we'll stick this back on. That has an O-ring that's actually doing the ceiling. And then we can take our red hose here our supply water line and just push that into the connector and we should be good to go. Next we'll be installing our drain saddle piece where the wastewater will be disposed of. You can also dispose of the wastewater in a floor drain or some other receptor if you have a good option but typically most people want to use this drain saddle adapter. Now you want to place the drain saddle adapter as far away from the the garbage disposal as possible. We will drill a quarter inch hole now in the top of this pipe here, and then we'll be ready. Then we have a little gasket here that we can install, just like so, and center that over our drain hole. Insert that into our drain fitting, and we're good to go. So we'll be drilling a hole for this uh, faucet here that we'll be installing on top of the counter. And then once that is done, we're going to use this adapter here, which is just this uh, quarter inch compression style fitting here that's going to thread on the base of this and then adapts to our 3 8 inch PEX tubing as you can see here. So we avoid having to use this actual compression nut so we can just take that off and put that in your junk drawer for later use. <laughs> You do not need any Teflon tape or anything on here. You simply thread this on there and get it basically hand tight, maybe a tiny bit extra and that's it. Just in case your system is a little bit different, I'll show you how these compression fittings work. So if you were to use quarter inch tubing to attach to this faucet here, uh, you would take your compression nut and slide that over your tubing first, like so. And then you would take your ferrule, this is called a ferrule, get your ferrule slid down over the tubing and then you'll use your stiffener, which is this tiny little plastic piece, and that sticks in the end here. That prevents the tubing from getting crushed by this compression fitting too much. So that's kind of how it looks before you attach it to the faucet. And then you push this into here, and then the pressure of this compression nut squeezing this ferrule up into the faucet makes a watertight seal. So if you're going to use that style fitting, that's how it works. We don't need to use those pieces because we can use this here adapter instead, which is so much easier. We just push our 3 8 packs into here and we're done. So just choose a location that you like along the back side of the sink for drilling your hole through. In this case, it's a laminate countertop, so that's really easy to do. But I will link right up here to a card for how to drill through granite. This is the guy that knows how to drill holes and things. Mm -hmm. So there you go. So there's a rubber gasket that goes on the faucet here first and then you are able to drop that through. Underneath we have this plastic washer and then a metal lock washer and then the lock nut itself. So we have our supply water line hooked up on this red hose here. The waste water line coming up, tapping into our uh, drain pipe and then we have our supply water line coming up to our faucet in this white tube right here. Those are all hooked up and going right down below the floor. So here we are under the floor. This is the shelf that Josiah just finished making. It looks fantastic. So here's our red line, which is our fresh water coming from the the cold water line upstairs under the sink and we'll just insert that here and on this side over here we've temporarily disconnected the fit the tube that goes up to the reverse osmosis membrane in order to send that water over into the tank as well as up to the faucet and what we're going to do now is sanitize the system by putting a little bit of bleach in this first stage, <laughs> put roughly a half teaspoon of bleach into the sediment filter housing. So we have a little bit of bleach in there. Now we have all the, the filters removed from all three of these filter housings. So I'm going to turn this on here now. So the fresh water is coming in, filling the sediment housing, 
and then the first and second stage of carbon housings and then it is flowing into this here tank with a little bit of bleach solution and that's just going to sanitize everything. We'll let that set for 15 minutes before we drain the water out of it. So we're going to turn off the water supply to the reverse osmosis and then we're going to drain all of the water out of the system. So we're draining this out for a second time and then we should be good to go. Our supply water coming through this red pipe right here comes to where we have a quarter inch valve to be able to shut off the inlet water whenever we need to change filters or whatever. I have this disconnected because we're going to go ahead and just flush through the sediment filter and the two carbon filters before we connect it up to the RO membrane area. So here's our sediment filter and then your first stage carbon filter and then your second stage carbon filter. We're going to go ahead and turn this on and just flush through these filters for a minute. So you want to flush out these filters until the water comes out clear. That second bucket looks much cleaner. We're just going to confirm that we have our RO membrane inside of here. Nope. Actually, it smells like one of those pool things you float around on in the lake. Carefully slide it into the membrane holder, like so, and reattach the hose. And right here, we have our wastewater outlet, and that's going to connect to our black hose. So now everything is set up. So I'm going to connect our expansion tank here to our RO system before the final stage. Our line here going to the faucet up at the sink will connect right to the end of our final stage. So we'll just turn our tank valve on here and we'll reconnect this water line here. So now we can turn our water on and it's going to start processing the water through the RO system like it's supposed to. So we'll go up and actually make sure that we have flow coming out of this black hose. So we're going to disconnect our black drain hose here and we should have a steady stream of water, which we do. It's not like it's a strong stream or anything, but we definitely have a stream and our saddle looks to be working good. The system is up and running now, so we're going to go ahead and let this totally regenerate and fill this tank. And then we're going to drain the tank and we're going to do that two times before we want to use any of the water out of the system. Make sure you check down in the description below. I'll put links to a really high quality reverse osmosis system if you're looking for one, as well as one that has a booster pump. So we're going to hook a refrigerator up to this system now for the ice maker as well as water dispenser. So click on this video right here and I'll see you over there in just a few seconds. If you found this to be helpful, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe down below for more videos like this one. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.